Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I want to show you how to paint this cherry blossom branch with Red Lantern. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're even going to use some Q-tips. So get those Q-tips, get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. Let's get started. I'm going to show you everything you need to know step by step so that you can create this at home. All you've got to do is follow along with me and you're going to succeed at this painting. This is an 11 by 14 canvas board. It is already gessoed. You don't need to do anything else to it. Over here, I have my acrylic paint laid out. And you can see, actually, we're only using three colors today. We're using cad yellow medium, phthalo blue, and naphthol red medium. I have white to lighten and black to darken. I've got some Q-tips for some interesting cherry blossoms, a couple brushes for acrylic painting with synthetic filaments that I really, really like, and I have my dauber sponges to make my bokeh. I am gonna show you a way that you can get around it if you can't get the sponges. All right, let's get started. Take your one inch stiff white nylon brush and go ahead, dip it into some water and drag off the extra water. The reason I like synthetic brushes is they don't pull in so much water, they get the right amount for acrylic. I'm gonna take a smidge of my yellow out. See this, I'm smidging over to my blue because I'm gonna to wanna to make a bit of a turquoise, just a bit of one, because I'm gonna enjoy that on my background as a play in the color. So I'm gonna not want it to be green, I'm gonna want it to be turquoise, which you can see right there it is. Get a little water just to make sure. Perfect, let's start painting in our painting. Just putting that out there. A nice, nice paint in the whole background. All right. Now, one thing I'm going to do is that my darkest color is going to be at the top, and I'm going to keep just pulling white paint into my mix. This is going to be ever lightening my sky. See that? Ever lightening my sky. I'm letting my brush directionality change around a bit. And you can see I've got some yellow pigment that pulled into it. I just wipe off my brush and keep going, pulling white into this area of paint that I mixed. There you go. If you're having trouble with this, you can do just blue and white. Don't get too stressed out on the journey. Paint it all in as fast as you can. No, you don't have to go fast, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> because that's what I do. All right, see how this is going in nicely? Excellent, excellent, excellent. A little more blue into that mix, a lot more white. I want it to really, really lighten up as I'm going. I'm gonna want it to be really light at the bottom I'm making a nice pretty background. I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna wipe it off. I still want some pigment in it. I'm gonna to come to the end of my white paint over here. And you can see I'm getting quite a light color if you need to. Just thin a bit with water and keep going. There we go. See the bottom is quite light. Isn't that fun? Keep pulling that out. So you can see I'm not really paying attention to having the brush strokes just go one direction. I'm actually kind of letting the brush move around and it makes it very expressive. That's kind of nice if you're new to painting because that's probably something you're inclined to do anyways. Now my brush makes easy work of this canvas because of the stiff filaments in it, it really, really puts the paint on the canvas. And there it is. Just adjust as you would like to. 
If any area got too dark or you didn't like the color, all you've got to do is let the paint dry and maybe go over it a little bit, see? So never feel trapped with acrylic paint. It's one of the reasons why I think it's so awesome is you can always make adjustments or change your mind or think it out. Be sure and rinse your brush out and lay it flat until you can go wash it with a good soap and water. All right, let's start doing the bokeh. I'm so excited to show you how to do this. I've got two ways to do it. You need to let your canvas dry so that the pink is very bright and luminous over the green. If your canvas is dry, you're ready to do the next step. First, I'm gonna show you a brush method and then I'm gonna show you the sponge method. The brush method involves taking a nice bright brush. This is a number 10, you can always find the number there. And this is a bright. So what you're looking for is a bright. Brights are shorter than flats, but if all you can find is a flat, don't worry about it, don't stress about it, it'll be okay. I'm gonna put out a little more white paint over here because I have so much blue around this and I want you to be able to really see what I'm gonna do with the brush. And then I'm gonna show you the sponge method. So I'm gonna get my brush a smidge wet, drag off the extra water. I'm gonna pull a little yellow out into my red. Kind of makes a nice little orange. I'm pull some white into this. You can even go back in the yellow so it has a little bit of different color. And you can make your circles simply by twirling your brush around to form a circle, okay? So if you don't have the sponge, don't stress on that. There's always a way to do something. Don't feel like you can't do it. Let's show you one more time. I'm gonna make a lighter one. I'm gonna layer it. And then I'm gonna show you how you can do it with the sponges. So see these are layered on each other and they're fine. And it'll work just like that. Now to do the sponge method, you see this right here? I'm gonna use this. This is a sponge dauber. They come in styles. You can get them with wood handles. You can get them with wood dowels. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to press this down into my paint and over here a little bit into my red. Maybe even grab a little of my yellow. Isn't that fun? I don't want it to go up the sides and I'm just loading it, loading my paint. So that's all it takes to do it. I'm gonna take it over my canvas. I'm gonna press in and spin. Press in and spin. Sometimes if you have any moisture in your sponge, it will want to bubble and all you've got to do is just re-spin. See, I'm gonna put that around here and there. Here and there, some of these big dark bokehs. I'm really not gonna come down past the midway point of my canvas with these. I'm gonna let some of them be very see-through. I definitely wanna layer them. The Easy Bokeh is a really fun, gorgeous process and I enjoy doing it very much. I'm gonna grab some of this white right here and go ahead and spin some up. Maybe add a little yellow to my spin. See that? And just come here, got bubbles, so press back down again, spin. You can always work those out. You don't have to worry about them when they happen. Just adding that. I like that brightness of color. Putting some more white on my bokeh. Plus I just don't want to waste the paint, so. Nice values. Maybe a couple here. Once I have that done, I'm definitely gonna wanna soak that sponge. Whatever kind of sponge you're using, be sure and soak it. I got some more white since I've gone through all my white. Fun stuff, this. Dipping my little smaller pounce. Right, a little smaller pounce in there. Doing another twirl, getting some real pink daubers. And I'm gonna really think about my 
cherry blossoms sparkling in the distance. Now I'm going to layer these. I'm going to not try to cluster them too much. I definitely want to spread them out, but I do like the layering of shapes and values. Maybe these will be slightly pinker. I found I like to go darker towards the back of the tree. That's sort of fun. See there? How it creates some drama. And you definitely, definitely want some drama. And I'm going to put out a little more white paint. I'm thinking I want uh, the implication of a little more cherry tree down low. So I'm going to get this. Loading it up. Loading is fun, isn't it? Just twirl, twirl. I really like it. I'm going to come here and imagine a little cluster right here. It's okay if some of it ends up being a little clustered. Don't worry about it because you're going to have a cherry branch in there. You're going to have some different stuff. I'm going to grab some of my yellow just to make sure that I have some dramatic values that I'm getting to play against. It's super fun. Find places around the canvas you think will look beautiful with that, but leave areas that are open, okay? When you have it where you like it, go ahead and make sure that you're soaking your sponges because you don't want the acrylic paint to dry on your sponge. Now I'm going to grab this number six round. So this is by Black Pearl. This is a number six. It's a round. This is synthetic fiber for acrylic paint. It's firm and this round has a very nice point on it. So I really won't need to grab a bunch of different brushes to get my branches in. I can probably do the entire tree with this. I'm going to dip my brush in the water, which is quite crowded. I'm going to load it. So I just push this in there and rush this around. You can see me twirling this. So I'm going to come over here just either above or below the halfway point. I don't want to bisect the canvas directly in half. So I think I'm going to go a little bit below on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to wander a very crookedy line. Let me dip some more paint in my brush with this black gesso up the canvas. I'm just on the tip of my brush. And I'm being very crooked and meandery. Think the roads on street maps. Of course, you're welcome to use our traceable that we offer on many, many of our projects. But I think this is one you can just freehand. Just think about the wandering nature of cherry blossoms. So once I have that main branch, I'm going to come here and I'm going to make it the thickest back here. So this is going to be about an inch and a half, two inches. And I'm going to make sure it's also very knotty. And I don't mean that in misbehaved. I mean that the tree has a lot of character and affectation in the wood. All right, just coming along with this. You can just see that this is sort of like calligraphy. If you'd ever been a fan of uh, something like Sumi Ink, you might find doing this tree very enjoyable. Just filling in the branch with the black. See, and it paints in quite well. This is a very nice brush. It really does this job quite well. Any round you have that has a good point and enough authority on the canvas to get the paint out will work. Another interesting thing I'll say is that it's okay to kind of have a rough brush stroke on a cherry tree because the cherry tree itself has a very rough bark. So these are things that are actually in your favor. Now I'm going to roll my brush. That kind of gets the extra paint off. I call that offloading. And I'm going to add some character branches to this story. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to add a little character branch coming up here. 
character branches on cherry trees are little offshoots, little bits of whimsy that tell more of the tree's story, make it of more interesting character. So I like to wander those out. You know, don't get don't get too stressed about it. Don't get too worried about it. You're just trying to tell a little story here. When you want the line to be lighter, just lighten your brush pressure. I think I will come here and make a branch that comes down. It wanders back up. It's off there. This gives me something that my lantern can be attached to. And there could be a little branch down here. Just thinking about these little branches and how they might be. You might wonder, each one is different. Each time you do it, it might be different. I think I definitely want a nice little, you can see I'm just wandering this around. Now I think that there's going to be another little branch here and that justifies these little blossoms that are happening. So come right here, this is a few inches down from this branch, wander it up, bring it down, kind of really enjoy the crookedness of it. Pull this in, just relax into it. Just relax into it. I'm gonna do this, this is really, really possible. Some strategies and some tips for success that I can recommend, especially for new painters, is that sometimes new painters make very short tree branch strokes they're very short like that, and you want to just lengthen them, make them longer, right? Enjoy their process. I'm just telling a little story. Enjoy the story. Enjoy this little story. Have fun. Now you can grab a little of your yellow, or maybe even a little bit of your white to make a highlight. I highly suggest that you come up the branch with this highlight a few places just to add a little character to your tree. Super fun. And I'll really give you some extra pop that'll be noticeable. Isn't that fantastic? There you go. If you need a little extra pop right there, just where we need it, wherever you're feeling it. If anything feels bare, just grab another little line of black and add some branch to it. Now rinse that brush out really well. The next really fun step we get to take is to take our Q-tips and make the delicate little cherry blossoms that are floating up among the branches. So I have several bundles of Q-tips. I have some Q-tips. This is just a hair band. You could use any rubber band, you could use a twist tie. And I have the inexpensive, you know, cotton buds, but you could use the precision ones, it's all okay. Success tip, I would use either a fluid paint or craft paint on the white, but I've done it with just the regular heavy bodied white, I didn't have to switch. Either is okay. I'm gonna dip the buds in the paint, and I'm gonna come around my branches can you see that? Adding this little bit of extra cherry blossoming pattern. I really enjoy using 
unexpected art materials. I'm going to come over here. I'm trying not to erase my bokeh or my branches. That's my goal. It's a good time to take a deep breath, let it out, and realize that however much tension you've been carrying or anxiety or worry, you can put that down. That pretty much everything on your canvas is okay because it's just art. I'm going to maybe add a little more there. I'm just looking for little delicate bits to put in. Little like baby's breath of it. Now, these trees, some of them are ancient. They have seen time pass by. I like to try to get into the energy or the space of the tree. Just so that I can feel that. Look at that. It's like a little cluster. I'm not even yet moving into a different size of bundle because I'm getting a good result from this one, which is kind of an uneven, unexpected pattern. See how it's bunched together? This season, I have so enjoyed Q-tip painting. I hope you have too. It's always a way to take something fun that you think of for maybe like a kid's art camp and turn it into a little bit more. I'm just dabbing to the outside. And you can see that here. I'm not taking away my branches and I'm not erasing my bokeh. I am just adding. Adding a little bit. Isn't that wonderful? They're so pretty. It's so pretty. It really is. All right, maybe a little bit here so that these clusters make sense. I've done a few cherry blossoms that you can check out. I enjoy them as a subject matter. Where I live in the south in Texas, we have a similar thing called azaleas, and they also have a very short bloom time. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about some of the details around here, and that is because I know I'm going to put this big, beautiful lantern. But even though I know I am, I still need to have a good layering effect. So I may extend these out past where I know the lantern will be covering the art. And I may add just a few of these dots back here to imply that a little more is going on. I think I'm going to rest there. So I managed to do all my cotton budding this time with four cotton buds. That's really cool. I'll have to put that in the thumbnail. Okay, it's very important at this stage to allow your painting to dry or to dry it with a hairdryer so that when you sketch in your lantern, it doesn't go crazy pink on you. So I'm going to dry mine with a hairdryer and I'll see you back to put in the lantern. Once your canvas is dry, you can start doing the prep work for putting in the lantern. I'm going to use a little chalk to help me plan out my circle before I just go at this canvas with paint. This is just chalkboard chalk or kids chalk. It's not anything special. It's just economical and available everywhere. And I'm going to sketch in a circle to fill my space. That's what I'm looking for. I can come over my branches a little bit, but I want to leave some of my cherry blossoms there to be enjoyed. And I need to leave a little room on the bottom for a tassel that will go by. So that's what you're going to be looking for. And so that's why I think chalk can be nice as an aid in art because it lets you make some decisions and change your mind without having big repercussions. And you can always just remove chalk lines with a little bit of smudging of your finger or a damp cloth once your paint is very dry. Your paint isn't very dry, I'll erase your paint. I'm going to take just this really friendly number six round and I'm going to paint in my whole lantern. So come here 
and get your brush damp again. Make sure that none of the black, if you're using the same brush, is in the brush. That's what I was doing there. And I'm going to take a smidge, a scotch of my dark color, my blue, over to my red. Not too much, just a little bit. And I'm going to follow my chalk line and kind of paint in my lantern here. If you really, really struggle with circles, one, don't feel bad. Okay, that's not an unnormal thing. You can always trace around a plate or something that's nearly the size. Just painting this all in. If you're painting on student paint, it may take a couple coats or you may have to paint your lantern in white first. So if you're like, wow, it's like it's like a glaze, like it's it's super thin, like let me see if I can show you if it's like you're painting and it's so thin. Go ahead and dry and just do two coats. That'll happen. Sometimes, especially with economy paints, because that's where they're gonna save the money is on the coverage and pigment. You know, but don't worry about that. Right now your only job is to have fun painting this painting and be getting excited that you're doing as good as you are because I know you're doing great. I know you are doing fantastic. You've got this. I'm just pressing this down one thing I want to say to you if you're very new is don't press so hard on your brush that you're hurting the brush or going like that. You don't want to be pushing into the canvas. It's hard on your hand, hard on the brush. Just enjoying painting in my lantern. I find this to be exceedingly cheerful personally. Now while it's all still sort of wet and interesting I'm gonna go into my blue much more strongly back here. But I'm gonna leave this side of the red pure so I can also make some bright oranges. And I'm gonna kind of shade this space. So I'm gonna come up to about the halfway point, back this side and create this shadow. See this? Blending it in. It's sort of fun. Just a little bit of a shadow. To say that this ball has form. See what we're doing? There we go. Just lightly. It's a good time to round your shape out or change anything you need to change. And if your brush is overloaded, you can do the offload. See? Offloading. Make sure that you're Giving yourself nice lines. Enjoy that right there. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush really, really, really well. Really well. And I'm going to get some of my red over to my yellow. And I'm going to come on this right side and add this brighter orange highlight. Let that blend back towards my dark value. Isn't that fun? A little more yellow. Just on this side. A little highlight. Rinse out. I'm going to take a bunch of my just red paint, come right in the middle with my pure red paint. It's going to make this lantern feel so red. Doesn't that feel really red? Really enjoy that.
And when I have as much red pigment on my lantern as I want, I'm feeling really good about the values. I'm going to come right into my yellow. You may need to offload your brush a bit. Get the yellow right on the tip here. See how that is right on the tip? And I'm going to make my little banding lines. So the first ones I'm going to make are going to come across the horizontal. They're a real light one. Come down to like inch and a half, two inches. And then I'll make some vertical ones. Just something light. Just something that implies that it happened. I don't want like a lot. I just want it a little bit. If you like your lines, you may come back with a smidge of black and kind of define them a little bit, but you don't have to. It's just a nice contrast thing that you can do. To enforce your story of lines. Now I'm going to take my black paint, come to the top of my lantern and make a little mount. It's just a little square rectangle at the top. I'm just painting it. I'm getting a little water every once in a while because I'm having uh, the flow isn't coming off my brush nicely. If it's not going to come off my brush nicely, I'm not going to worry about it. And then directly below, I'm going to make the little mount for the tassel. I'm rinsing this brush out so well, I'm even going to get into a brand new set of water. For fun, I'm going to take a little bit of my leftover orange color that I have. And that's what I'm going to make it look like is tied up here. Adding a little water to my brush and swirling it around just to improve the flow. And I'm going to tell that little story of that little string floating off. So I've loaded up a bit of the yellow on my brush with a little red so that it's a bright orange. This is going to be the base and I'm going to come under my lantern and flow a little brush stroke back. Brush stroke. That's all we're doing. So we're going to going to put out a little bit more yellow. So I have some bright yellow for some highlighting. I'm rinse out my brush a little bit. I'm going to get some just yellow on there. And I'm going to add on the right hand side a highlight to both the top and bottom of the lantern. Just a small one. And I'm going to get this white paint and my yellow together. And I'm going to bring this tassel right off this canvas. We are literally almost done. Highlight again. Yeah, there we go. Just want a bright one. You know, just a bright little highlight coming back. This is a cheerful lantern. There we go. And now, just a few little white highlights to really make it flow. It's time to sign your painting. I hope you had a lot of fun doing this painting. I certainly had a lot of fun teaching it to you and I really enjoyed making it myself. 
I'm so glad you cleared some time for creativity today. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other. If you love this channel, be sure and hit the like, comment, and subscribe stuff. And I wanna see you at the easel really soon. Okay, bye-bye.